Hey guys and welcome back. I am super excited for today's video. I'm going to be expanding on my approach to the yin yang methodology when it comes to developing a harmonious personal style. Now if you guys are new around here, my name is Elisa and this channel is based around exploring and curating a personal style through the yin yang methodology. And if you don't know what that is, that's exactly the purpose of today's video. So I'm going to do a full breakdown of this methodology so you can start to apply it for yourself. So let's get straight into it. Now, this method includes getting to know your physical features, so your body and facial features, discovering your essence, which are your non-physical features or characteristics, and understanding the inner relation of all of your unique characteristics. Now, in my opinion, this method is superior to the fruit shape system because of this idea of understanding how all of your unique characteristics relate to each other. And instead of holding the hourglass figure to a golden standard, the idea behind this approach is to essentially mimic your natural lines and shapes and incorporate elements that are representative of your essence traits. So in my opinion, it's more inclusive and extensive than the fruit system and really aims to enhance and honor what we already have by paying attention to interactions and effects. Now, overall, this method is built off of some objective absolutes as well as some more intuitive approaches. But nonetheless, as long as you have an understanding of the core principles and begin to pay attention to how head to toe looks interact with your unique balance, you'll be on your way to curating a fully custom and complimentary wardrobe. Now, I do offer body type and style essence analysis services, but because I use this approach, you won't find me using any scales, measuring tapes, or quick quizzes to produce my analysis reports. These reports aim to clearly identify your unique balance and help give clear direction on how to start building a custom wardrobe. Now, if you want more information and would like to purchase a custom analysis, you can visit my website, which is elisaesthetic.com. Okay, so let's touch on a little bit of the history and where this method was derived from. So this particular approach was first introduced by a woman named Belle Northrup back in 1936. She wrote a 10-page article for a publication called Education Today, which was published by Columbia University. Now, if you watched my body type history video, you'd know that Bell encouraged us to see where we can identify yin and yang in our own settings to get a better sense of these characteristics. Now, her article starts off by pointing out the problem of an outfit looking off, unfitting, or separate from the individual, and argues that a person's emotional <laughs> and physical traits should be sensed as a whole and therefore represented in their own ensemble. And I love this perspective because it really encourages expression through personal style, which I think was very forward thinking for 1936. Now, in order to help achieve this idea of the individual looking fully harmonious, she proposed that we adopt a means of communicating through a universal language. She goes on to suggest we use terms that can explain complex meanings, which are typically felt rather than really clearly understood, and thus was born the idea of viewing personal qualities through the lens of yin and yang. This would really help quantify and communicate the interrelation of an individual's physical and non-physical characteristics, as well as how they relate to the head-to-toe elements of their ensemble. So the garments, hair, makeup, and accessories were all included in this. The idea was to have everything work together with the intention of producing a harmonious result. Now, to make a beginning in practicing this methodology, you'll need to understand the concept that there's a certain degree or 
different types of yin-yang characteristics that exist physically and non-physically within each individual, which actually results in having our own unique balance. And once we discover our unique balance, we can begin to gain a better understanding of the interaction between who we are as an individual and the looks that we create. The idea is to create looks that are in harmony with our physical features by mimicking our individual lines, shapes, and patterns. This helps guide us on how to navigate creating complementary silhouettes and overall outfit compositions. And then we have the aspect of expression. So conducting an honest self-appraisal when it comes to our essence characteristics will allow us to explore the possibilities of authenticity in our wardrobes. So in my opinion, this methodology transcends any temporary trends and allows us to implement a custom personal style throughout our lifetime as our lifestyle and general interests morph and change. And honestly, who doesn't want that? <laughs> but before we get into all the details of how to discover our natural balance and put together full looks, I think it's important to familiarize ourselves and deepen our perspective on yin and yang. So hang with me here as we explore yin and yang before getting into body types and how to dress and all that fun stuff. It'll all make much more sense if we take the time to understand the universal language. Okay, so what we really need to do to get a good start here is set some sort of metric for measuring yin and yang or identifying these characteristics. Now, Belle Northrup did a great job of outlining this in her article and offers examples like a towering pine tree is yang when compared to a graceful willow, which is yin. A sunflower is yang in contrast to the proportions of a yin white field daisy. And the architecture of the Taj Mahal is very yin in essence compared to the great pyramids of Egypt, which are very yang. So generally, yang can be characterized by the following mature, striking, bold, heavy and assertive energy, rigid and sharp. And generally, yin can be characterized by the following. Youthful, magnetic, coy, light, bouncy energy, delicate, and rounded. Now, I'm sure there's a few more adjectives we can use to describe yin and yang, but I think it's more helpful to explore these two extremes as they exist in our natural world. So I chose two different settings. The first setting is a very young setting in nature, and that is a city building setting. So the city building is rigid with un uninterrupted long vertical lines. It has a strong presence. It has the essence of stability. It's sturdy and industrial feeling. Now, the opposing setting is a forest cottage yin setting. Now, this cottage setting is more fluid. It's more rounded in composition. It has a certain degree of delicate essence. It doesn't give off the same unmovable impression as the city building. It's warm and illuminating. Okay, now let's explore the effects of extreme yin and yang interacting with each other in a very severe way. So here we have a very yang metal sculpture. It's very strong and rigid in essence, placed in a very yin setting. Now, of course, it's a matter of taste and opinion if you choose to place this sort of artwork in this setting, but there's no denying that the contemporary art piece is harsh on the eye in this particular setting. It doesn't add to the harmony of this natural setting. It actually ends up distracting which would be beneficial if, for instance, you wanted to have the viewer's eye be drawn to the art piece rather than the setting as a whole, like in an art show. But if we translate this application of principles into the context of putting together head-to-toe looks for ourselves, this is an example of how an element can distract from the overall harmony. And maybe this is the effect you desire, but what I want to promote is the idea of paying attention to these effects and to bring in a heightened sense of awareness. This is a very valuable tool to identifying why something works, why it doesn't, and creating desired outcomes with your head-to-toe looks. Now, I think a good example of sculptures or an element that adds to the overall aesthetic as 
essence and harmony of a naturalistic yin setting like a home garden are stone sculptures. Now, stone sculptures end up looking very native in these types of settings for a couple of different reasons. The first is that they tend to be more fluid in design and in this example, are to scale with the rest of the landscape. Second is that they're made from more naturalistic and earthy materials like soapstone, marble, clay, etc. So the total interrelation between the fluid shapes, proportion and scale, and materials allows the viewer to easily observe the setting as a whole rather than in fragments, which ultimately creates an overall harmonious rhythm for the setting. So if you're starting to catch on here, the idea behind this method is to make a conscious effort to identify the interaction and effect produced, with the goal being to create something that works together as a whole. This method really provokes us to distill, but not limit, our true harmony and authenticity. Okay, let's take a look at another piece of imagery through the lens of yin and yang, dance. Now, I chose two different dances that I feel do a really good job of representing the two extremes of yin and yang and contrast each other well. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of other examples out there, but these two really stuck out to me. Okay, first up is yang, and I chose the tango. So let's watch a little snippet of a choreographed tango dance together. Okay, I hope you guys can see just how powerful this tango dance really is. It has sharp rhythm. Of course, it still has fluidity to it because it is a form of dance, but in comparison to other dance genres, it's a bit stiff or maybe structured is a better word for it. The dancers maintain a very erect and rigid posture and maintain a very serious presence. The dance demands sharp body movements, the energy is deep and strong, even the lines they create are sharp and powerful, and it has this essence of maturity. The rhythm is long with points of sharpness. Okay, now let's look at what I feel is a very yin genre of dance, and that would be swing. So it has light fluid movements and swirling lines. The shapes they're carving out are continuous, tight, and circular with the spinning and the flipping. And it has this playful and youthful essence. And unlike the erect posture of the tango, the swing dancers aren't afraid to crouch a little bit, which adds to the overall rounded composition of the dance. We also see a lot of expressiveness in the interactions between the partners, especially their facial expressions. And the rhythm is short and broken, which we see clearly demonstrated with their continuous upbeat foot movements to the tempo of the music. Now, dance is a great example of yin and yang, not only because of the inherent characteristics we can identify within the movements, expression, and imagery, but also the choice of clothes for each. We notice that tango costumes are sleek and a bit more mature, which complements the movements of that dance. Now, there are elements of romance because of the sensual nature of the dance, but overall, in contrast to the very yin swing dance, the costumes are very young in essence. Now, the swing dance costumes offer a fair amount of animation with skirts that generally offer enough flow to pull through the small circular shapes the dancers are carving out. And we see playful details like piping, buttons, and lively prints. So for each of these genres of dance, we see that the interrelation between the music, dance moves, essence expression, and costumes offers a distinct harmony. Okay, so I hope these examples have sufficiently illustrated the extremes of yin and yang, and we can definitely go on and on and on identifying yin and yang within our natural world, but how do we translate this into building a wardrobe for ourselves? Well, this is where we reach the topic of identifying yin and yang within our physical features and essence traits. Okay, just to recap, generally, yang can be characterized by the following, mature, striking, bold, heavy and assertive energy, rigid, and sharp. 
and generally yin can be characterized by youthful, magnetic, coy, light bouncy energy, delicate, and rounded. Now, Bell Northrup gave us a great start in offering the yin-yang perspective, but seeing how we're all so unique, these extreme yin-yang characteristics might not be so easy or obvious for us to identify within ourselves. So what we really need to do is expand on the metric for identifying yin and yang characteristics. And luckily for us, a woman by the name of Harriet McJemsey offered a great starting point for this. Back in 1963, she essentially picked up where Bell Northrup left off and wrote about six main archetypes through the lens of yin and yang. So let's take a look. So instead of confining us to extreme yin and yang characteristics, she created a type of spectrum, the six archetypes, dramatic, natural, classic, romantic, Gimin and Anjanu. Now, I want to make it very clear that she states that these are to be used more as adjectives rather than definite nouns. So we're encouraged to see where we can find and identify these characteristics or where they exist within you rather than firmly assigning yourself to an archetype per se. Now you can find McJimsey's exact outline of these archetypes in a free version of her book that's available online, but I'm gonna offer my personal insight into the yin-yang spectrum of the archetypes based on my experience of conducting personal analysis reports for a wide variety of individuals. So as I always like to disclose, <laughs> I do not represent any other personal stylist out there or their work nor am I using anyone's personal method. I simply use the overall yin-yang methodology. So with all that said, I do like to take inspiration from McJimsey's six major archetypes as a basis for comparison. I believe that she offered a very strong outline of the yin-yang spectrum when it comes to major physical features, but I do tend to make adjustments for some of her findings that I feel are dated and inaccurate especially for our modern culture. Because remember, these original archetypes were first outlined almost 60 years ago. So obviously we're in a much different place now. So in this video, I've decided to highlight the major physical characteristics of each archetype and offer additional visual representation with some rudimentary shapes rather than celebrity women. I think getting a better understanding of the general composition using rudimentary shapes is much more helpful to those of you who are new to this method. It helps prevent us from attaching ourselves to a particular celebrity and allows us to focus on our personal shapes. But also keep in mind that these are just to be used as a basis for comparison. And I'm going to elaborate on each of these types in some upcoming videos. This is really just to get a broad idea and become more familiar with the spectrum of yin and yang. So let's start off by taking a look at the spectrum of the six archetypes as it pertains to their body and face lines and shapes. Now, what we really want to pay attention to is the characteristics of the overall bone structure and flesh of the body, because again, these are going to lead us to what our natural shapes and lines are. So let's take a look at the spectrum and how these characteristics compare to each other, starting with yang. Okay, first we have dramatic, long vertical line, angular bone structure, sharp, rigid shapes, elongation, bold forward frame natural blunt bone structure can have a long vertical line soft squared shapes with its shoulders so you can appear somewhat broad can appear athletic as well classic balanced proportionate moderate vertical line slightly angular slightly oval or oblong shapes romantic very soft rounded and curved moderate vertical line Gamin, short vertical line, compact, square, angular, and possible extreme contrasting characteristics. Ingenue, delicate, bone structure appears dainty, repeating small circular shapes. 
Now, although there are some individuals who will exclusively physically resemble the descriptions of the main archetypes, I believe that most of us will demonstrate some strongly identifiable base attributes of a particular archetype, but could still have secondary characteristics which offer a certain degree of influence over our unique balance. I just come from the perspective that although nature can have defined patterns, it's not always entirely predictable or rigid in outcome. So in other words, there's no way that we could perfectly place every single person into one of the main archetype categories. So my method is to identify and quantify, but never assign or restrict, which gives me the opportunity to really find your unique balance. So like I said earlier, the whole idea of identifying our lines and shapes is to have a roadmap of the types of silhouettes and construction of clothing that'll look most harmonious on us. And this is generally done by mimicking our natural lines and shapes. So for example, in general, a dramatic will look more harmonious with sleek, rigid, and angular silhouettes and construction. A natural will look more harmonious in softly squared and relaxed lines and silhouettes. A classic will look more harmonious in balanced, smooth, and more cleanly tailored silhouettes and construction. A romantic will look more harmonious in rounded silhouettes and softly draped construction. A gamine will look more harmonious in well-tailored, broken lines and silhouettes that offer upward movement. And an ingenue will look more harmonious in continuous, short circular lines and silhouettes that offer some sort of upward movement as well. Now keep in mind that these suggestions are not made to set limitations. Instead, they're intended to give a baseline to work from. By simply mimicking your natural lines and shapes, you can begin to easily create looks that have a complementary silhouette, and putting together simple outfits will come much more intuitively. Now, to prevent this video from being hours and hours long, I'm going to be making more in-depth videos on each of the archetypes and possible unique physical balances. So this was really meant to give you an introduction, and so we're going to move forward and take a look at the spectrum of non-physical characteristics which is essence. Okay, so let's take a look at the spectrum of essence. Now, in my opinion, without the evaluation of essence, the process of developing a personal style can become a little mechanical. <laughs> Essence expression is what really allows us to come alive in our looks. Now, undoubtedly, there's a certain degree of essence that is influenced by our physical appearance. These are going to be things like how you use gestures, that little bit of twinkle in your eye. Maybe you have a naturally mischievous smirk or maybe you have more of a naturally stern gaze. Either way, there's bound to be nuanced physical traits that speak to your essence. But in my opinion, your essence is fully manifested through your non-physical characteristics, such as the way you speak, your inherent attitude or demeanor, how you interact with those around you, as well as your general interests and lifestyle. Again, I don't necessarily like to associate these essence traits with a particular archetype because I feel like it can skew how you perceive your authentic self. Instead, I do like to approach essence on more of a spectrum. To me, this allows us enough room to truly discover and honor these aspects of ourselves, which will make building a wardrobe that is distinctly you much more easy to achieve. So let's take a look at the yin yang spectrum of essence starting with extreme yang. Sophisticated, dominant, regal, mature, decisive, bold energy, reserved. Moving down the scale, open, grounded, free, easygoing, casual warmth, frank, effortless, refreshing. Clear, poised, controlled, mild temperament, gracious and well-mannered, aristocratic, refined, pragmatic, naturally elegant. Leaning more towards yin, flirtatious, radiant, charming, inviting, magnetic, sensual, enchanting. Going down the scale, direct, high-spirited, alert, moxie, playful, spunky, lively, dynamic. And extreme yin is sparkling, coy, youthful, delicately graceful, gentle, 
airy, angelic. So of course, there's bound to be characteristics that didn't make it onto this graphic, but the idea was to give you a sense in broad outline of the spectrum of essence. Now, the overall purpose of becoming more conscious of our essence traits is to understand our total inner relation or characteristics so we can begin to really express ourselves through details, prints, accessories, and perhaps even daring silhouettes that push certain boundaries. So to give an example, if you are naturally extremely artistic and have a genuine love for all things quirky, incorporating high contrast patterns and prints as well as lively accessories and details would be an authentic approach to your wardrobe. And on the flip side, let's say that you live a fairly relaxed lifestyle. You're naturally down to earth and really value practicality. Well, incorporating casual key pieces in a simplistic and mellow color palette would serve as a great start to curating a wardrobe that you love and feel comfortable in. So these sort of examples can go on and on and on, but I hope you see how this practice can add value to your authenticity and help eliminate the feeling of being pressured into keeping up with appearances that just don't feel right. I know I felt that for a long time. I would put on clothes that looked so cute on the Pinterest model, but when I wore them, even if the outfit looked fairly good, I just didn't feel myself. It was uncomfortable and dishonest. <laughs> so I personally see essence evaluation as such an important step in self-development in general, but also in building authentic wardrobes. Now, something that I've noticed is that sometimes an individual can match up essence-wise on the spectrum with where they are physically. So for instance, someone who is quite representative of the dramatic archetype will also be quite young in essence. But this is not always the case. So what happens if you're someone who is very representative of a dramatic, but your essence is more high-spirited or yin-leaning? Well, this can be represented in your wardrobe through the use of loud and high-tempo color palettes, prints, details, and accessories. Or you can choose to really play up your angles and go for more unusual and unique silhouettes. Either way, the idea is that your unique combination of physical and essence yin-yang traits will always carve out the path to an authentic approach towards your wardrobe. I think this can be best demonstrated with a few examples. Now, I thought it'd be fun to choose three different women who are in the public light and contrast each other well enough to give a fairly versatile look at the characteristics of yin and yang. So for all of you 30-somethings and plus out there, I decided to go with our generation of the ultimate trio, the 2000s Charlie's Angels. Now, in case you've forgotten, this includes Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. And I seriously adore all three of these women and feel like they have a good range of traits between all three of them for this analysis. So I'm going to do a brief analysis on each of them to demonstrate their total unique balance and what type of wardrobe complements them best. Okay, first up here, let's take a look at the body lines and shapes, facial features, and essence characteristics of Cameron Diaz. So starting out with her body lines and shapes, first off, you can tell that she is quite tall. So she has an elongated vertical line. You can also see that she has very wide or broad shoulders and a frame that is angular, but it's not sharp. So she has more of a blunted or beveled bone structure. Okay, moving forward to her facial features, you can see that she has a more heavy brow bone. She also has a wide and blunted facial structure. So she has a softly squared jawline, a slightly wide nose, her lips are elongated width-wise, and a blunted chin. Now, as far as her essence characteristics, she appears to be pretty casual, friendly, approachable, free-spirited, inviting, and upbeat. So this makes for a total interrelation of a laid-back natural. So physically, she's most representative of a natural with soft squared shapes, blunted edges, wide shoulders, and a long vertical line. And her essence traits offer an air of warmth with an approachable, casual vibe. 
Okay, so let's take a look at some wardrobe options that work for her and other ones that just are not as flattering. Okay, so first up here in example one on the left hand side, we have this kind of pleather dress going on. It's a bodycon form fitting dress. The leather itself is a very stiff material and to put it into an application of a bodycon dress like this, it's really going to take the right type of angles and shapes to really make it look harmonious on you. So on Cameron here, this is just looking a little too severe and stiff. It really fights against her naturally casual lines and it really doesn't speak to her essence. Now, if we go over to the look on the right, it's a very softly squared silhouette. So I think with the leather dress, there's a certain amount of kind of sexiness that maybe she was trying to pull through, her or her stylist were trying to pull through. And here you can see on the right that that sexiness is still pulled through. We can also see that the form-fitting bodice really gives that hugging kind of quality. But then from the hips down, we have this beautiful softly squared silhouette that's just really really complimentary on her. So it still gives us that kind of sleek, sexy effect, but it works most in harmony with her natural lines and shapes. Okay, moving on to example two on the left, it's kind of the same effect that we saw happening in example one. We have this really high neckline um, working together with the construction of the dress. Again, it's just really restricting on Cameron Diaz. So it just kind of comes off as a little stiff and unnatural on her. Now the look on the right, we can see that this construction really allows her to shine. The open neckline is working very well for her here and the casual beveled lines that are produced by the cinching of the waist with this sort of construction and material of dress, it just really pulls through those relaxed lines that mesh so well with her. Plus we have the upside of the color palette being more congruent with her essence traits. So overall you can see that Cameron is able to wear these relaxed lines and still appear a certain level of sophisticated. Okay, moving on here to example three, this dress here on the left, it's probably one of my least favorite looks I've ever seen Cameron Diaz in. Everything about this dress just is not serving her well. So we have this really high neckline. The hemline is not hitting her at a good place for the construction that we're working with here. It's just not working out, the lace detail. So overall, she just tends to look gawky and immature. This doesn't interact well with her beveled lines. This doesn't interact well with her long vertical line. It's just not her best. And this sort of like lacing detail in this kind of application, it just tends to look very immature on her. Okay, so let's cruise on over here to the look on the right. Now, I know that this look is a far cry from the look on the left, but there's a couple of key points here that I really want to point out because these small little details in this dress are what really make her look so harmonious in this. Okay, so first up we have this V neckline, which is really going to help open things up and play to her vertical line. And then we have the construction of the dress overall. Now you can see that it almost appears to be as if it's a bodycon dress, but it is not. It is not tightly hugging the contours of her body. We still have a little bit of this loose fit, and you can really see that in the sleeves, how the sleeves are a little bit scrunched up. It creates a little bit of that beveled kind of effect. So the way that this sits on her natural silhouette is so complimentary. It doesn't feel restricting, and she still kind of pulls off that sexy, um, you know, here's my natural silhouette kind of look. And take note that the material that's used here is really helping pull that through because in examples one and two on the looks on the left, those materials are meant to be used in a very constructed, highly constructed kind of way. So here the material is really helping pull through a little bit more of that casual silhouette. But 
you can see that it's still a very glam look. Now, if we go down to the hemline, you can see that the hemline, instead of meeting her just right there at the knee and cutting off her vertical line, it really tapers into her mid thigh area, which is so lovely on her because she has these gorgeous long legs. So this really, again, helps emphasize her beautiful long line. Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to point out here is the color of this dress. Now, if we look at the dress on the left, this optic white with the bright cherry red is just so harsh on Cameron. However, this toned down beigey gray that she has on the right complements her natural coloring so much better. Okay, so I hope you can see from these three examples just how Cameron Diaz can be complemented in certain lines, shapes, and outfit compositions. Okay, let's move on to Drew Barrymore starting out with her body lines and shapes. So first off, you can see that she has a moderate vertical line as well as a moderate bone structure. So her bone structure isn't super dense, but it's also not delicate. She also has a pretty small waist in comparison to her dominant repeating circular curves and she has repeating circular shapes. Okay, so moving over to her facial features, you can see that she has an overall rounded facial structure. So she has softly rounded eyes, rounded lips, softly rounded chin, and rounded plump cheeks. Okay, and now her essence characteristics. Now, overall, she's pretty sweet, gentle, she's got a soft demeanor, she's playful and bubbly, but she also has this little dash of wild, which I can tell that she really likes to bring that in through some boho vibes in her wardrobe. And she can also be a little bit of a chameleon. So her total inner relation is a sweet and gentle romantic. Physically, she's most representative of a romantic with soft repeating curves or circular shapes and a moderate vertical line. Her essence traits are generally gentle and endearing, but she can have a little bit of a chameleon kind of vibe to her and she can also be playful at times. Okay, so let's take a look at her three examples starting with example one. So first off, we have this really odd ensemble on her. The blazer with this sort of fit and flare long skirt, it seems to hit her right at her knees unless this picture is taken at a weird angle, is just, it's such an awkward silhouette on her and the color blocking is very harsh. So she needs something that's going to accommodate her curves a little bit more and we don't have these harsh line breaks. So if we cruise on over to the right look here in this beautiful floral dress, my gosh, this is like one of her best looks, I feel. So she has a little bit more of a softer silhouette with waist definition and the colors are more blended. So this is way more complimentary than this look over here on the right. Okay, moving over to example number two, this look on the left is just, it is not doing her any favors. Her curves totally get lost in this. It's bulky, it's oversized. This is just, again, like one of her most uncomplimentary looks I do not like this at all for her. So instead, we have this look over on the right that just hugs the contours of her body so beautifully. She looks so elegant. She looks almost ethereal looking. This just really makes her glow. So we have these beautiful curved lines that are created by the draping of the material. Again, just like with Cameron, the material that these garments are made with plays such an important role so the material here is really lending itself to hug the contours of her body with the way that it's constructed and we can even see with the ruching that we have here the eye is drawn to her natural curves so again this is just such a gorgeous dress on her especially in comparison to this look over here on the left. Okay, now for example three, so this look on the left, we have this very casual kind of boho outfit. And, you know, this is something that I noticed with Drew Barrymore as I was creating this video. And I don't know, she's just an interesting study when it comes to personal style. So she definitely is gravitated towards this sort of boho vibe. There's something about her that just really is drawn to that. And I can also see that in her essence. She has this certain amount of like freedom to her. However, when she puts together ensembles like this, she is not complimented by them at all. She looks much more wide than what she is. And she really just kind of gets washed out by a look like this. 
Now, if we go over to the right here, this is exactly how Drew can pull off boho so magically. She looks gorgeous in this. She looks like a boho mermaid. I love this look on her. So we have this soft draping brought in with the skirt, again, complementing, complementing her curves. And then we have great waist emphasis with this cool, chunky leather belt. And of course, the essence expression is still there. So she doesn't have to fold on not wearing boho because, you know, it's not congruent with her romantic curved lines. That's not the case at all. She just has to really focus on putting together outfits that composition-wise work with her natural harmony. And I think that this is a great example of that. So these are the three looks for Drew Barrymore, and I hope you guys got a little bit of a better idea of what is most complimentary on her. Okay, and last up here, we have Lucy Liu. She is just so stunning. So first off, let's look at her body lines and shapes. So first off, the first thing that I noticed is just how angular her bone structure is. So she appears to be slightly elongated, but... Even though she has this sharpness to her bone structure, it's also pretty delicate. Um, and she is a very petite woman. So angular, petite bone structure. And it does have some elongation. But we also see that she has these gorgeous, soft, repeating curves with a very defined waist. Now, this picture that I used was one of the only pictures I could find of like her really, a really good depiction of her body contours without a lot of clothing that might be manipulating and stuff like that. But if you look up more pictures, you're going to be able to find exactly what I'm talking about. This delicate bone structure that has some angularity with these lush curves. She's just, she's so stunning. Okay, so let's move over to her facial features. Again, in her facial features, she has quite a bit of elongation. She also has these very hollow cheeks, dramatic upswept eyes, and overall her facial structure, her bone structure is very sharp and angular but we're also met with more softer features like her cute little nose and her full lips. Okay, let's move on to her essence characteristics. Now, this was a really fun kind of study to conduct because Lucy Liu, I feel like I hadn't really seen her, just her, the authentic her, um, I don't think ever. Like I've only ever seen her in movies and TV shows and stuff like that. So I found a couple of interviews to watch and they weren't like these late night interviews where you know you're supposed to be a little bit more charismatic and all that kind of stuff. And it was really cool to see her natural demeanor. So these are some things that I really picked up on as far as her essence is concerned. So first off, overall, she just has a very erect kind of posture. She also is very unwavering. She just has this sort of even keeled nature about her. She's also very direct and has this kind of magnetizing intensity about her. She's just, man, she's kind of everything I wish I was. Cause I know in these YouTube videos, I'm a little bit more composed and I would like to be that way because I'm getting you guys a whole bunch of information, but it would be actually really interesting to kind of put my own essence out there for you guys. But anyways, this is about Lucy Liu. So the total inner relation, I think, is a fierce romantic. So the angularity yet delicate nature of her bone structure combined with her soft repeating curves makes for an intense version of a small scale romantic. Her essence is very direct and magnetizing. She also has an unwavering nerve, which kind of gives me this sense that she really has her wits about her. Okay, so first up, example one, look on the left. Overall, this is just such an awkward and bland look on her. I just, I, I, this is like my, one of my least favorite looks for her. So overall, the color story is very bland. The silhouette is just super awkward. It comes off as sloppy. It's just not doing her any favors. This is such a lackluster look for her. Now, if we look over on the right, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous silhouette for her. She's got the cinched waist her curves are being accommodated here. Now, in my notes, I said that this is her version of quote-unquote relaxed lines with waist emphasis. Now, I know that this isn't at a relaxed look, but what I'm trying to communicate here is the way that the material is kind of ruched. It does have a little bit of this kind of relaxed feel to it, so we can see that those little kind of beveled lines are being created. 
but we still have great waist definition. So by no means is this necessarily a relaxed look. I just wanted to demonstrate how the lines themselves and the material that itself can appear a little bit more relaxed, but you can still pull through a silhouette that is very complimentary. So that's what that's all about. Okay, example number two, look on the left. Overall, this look is just, again, it's kind of one of my least favorites. To me, she appears immature and just overall sloppy. This bag is not in good proportion with her. It's really slouchy. It just offers nothing. It's so distracting to the overall look. But if you take the bag away, the overall composition between the jacket and the skirt and these black tights, it is not playing well with her curves and angles at all. She really gets entirely lost in all of this and then we see her legs and her legs look really shortened her proportions just look so awkward in this so if we cruise on over to the look on the right now this is an example of how she can accommodate her angularity and curves and add some interest with some small geometric patterns so you know, she doesn't have to do a lot here to really kind of add some fun elements. And she just, she doesn't have to get lost in all of this riffraff that's going on on the left here. So, oh, something else I really love about this look on the right is the shoulders, the construction of the shoulders here. It's kind of got this little sharp shoulder pad going on. Oh, it is just, it's so gorgeous on her frame. I just, I love this look. I love, love, love it. Especially if we want to talk about her scale, because she is smaller scale. Even though she has a lot of angularity to her, she is smaller scale. So putting her in larger geometrics are going to, it's going to be very distracting. But we have these smaller geometrics here that just, they're in proportion with her scale and they play well with her angularity. So this is just, this is a very harmonious look on her. I I love this. Okay, last up here we have example three, which actually has three different examples that I'm going to hit on because I thought I would make a couple of cool different little points. So first off with the look that is just not working for her over here on the left. Now the silhouette and details are just, they're not crisp and sleek enough. She looks much better in sleek, crisp, details. This is just busy and sloppy on her. It looks messy. It is uncomplimentary. I am also not a fan of the hemline. So with the line that the skirt portion of this dress creates, it's kind of flared out. That is not complimentary on her frame. So if she was going to have a hemline that was going just below the knee, she would really want it to taper down. This just, she gets lost in this. So again, she does have a little bit more of a petite frame and we lose her here. Okay, now if we go over to the middle look here, we can see that we're kind of pulling some inspiration from the look on the left with a little bit of this kind of fringe detail and little lace details going on. But this is much more complimentary because of the tape tailoring here. So it's more articulated, if that makes sense. So instead of having this kind of sloppy mess over on the left, we have a really good construction that kind of complements her angularity very, very well. Now, a lot of you guys might be saying, oh, well, this is a little bit more of a gamine kind of inspired look. And Someone like Lucy Liu that is small scale and still pulls through a little bit more of a delicate and angular bone structure, inherently, they're going to be able to pull off a little bit more gamine lines. However, if we start to get her in all sorts of, you know, crazy animated prints and everything like that, it's just not going to jive. Okay, now let's cruise over to this far right look. Now, this dress beautifully highlights her elongation I love this dress on her. This is, I think, in most harmony with her. So, so gorgeous. Notice how the hemline is just above her knee rather than below her knee, like on the first dress. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, what I really love about this dress is, yes, the construction is beautiful and it's sleek and it's also a little bit feminine with the design of the skirt portion. But what I really love about this are the cutouts, especially near the face. Those cutouts near her face really highlight the angularity of her face, but they're not so stiff to where they look unnatural on her. Because remember, she does have these beautiful kind of natural curves. So these ellipse cutouts just beautifully mimic 
her natural shapes in a way that just it looks so harmonious i also love this middle cutout it kind of again draws the eye to this elongation that she has and it really is just so complimentary and gorgeous so Overall, I think this far right look is probably my favorite, but I hope that all three of these examples gave you a little bit more insight into what looks most harmonious and why on Lucy Liu. Now, obviously there's all sorts of different body shapes and unique characteristics that are represented from around the world. And one of the things I absolutely love about this methodology is how it's able to really transcend since it operates off of the principle of interrelation. This makes for a very inclusive experience for each individual. I firmly believe that this method can be adapted by anyone. Okay, so I hope this video helped give you a good foundation to begin your journey using the yin yang methodology. And I would love to hear your thoughts, any questions or special requests for videos in the description box down below. But that is it for today, you guys. I hope you all are doing very well and I will see you at the next video. Bye.